All right, everyone, I figured I'd do a longer video specifically on the concept of Joe Biden possibly running in 2020. Apparently, according to his aides, he already has an exploratory committee. Now, this doesn't mean that he's decided to run. What this means is that he's examining the parameters under which he might run, uh, looking into what kind of fundraising can be done, what would our reasonable expectations be if we did run, who are our likely opponents, uh, you know, within the Democratic Party, of course, because they're going to have to choose a nominee. My feeling is this. There's a very low chance Biden ends up becoming the Democratic nominee. There's a better chance that he actually tries to run. It's, it's possible that he tries. The thing is, he's got several uh, impediments to that. The first is his age. He's older than Trump. He's in his 70s. Um, that's a stumbling block. It's one thing for Trump to be... It, it became an issue just with Trump. Basically, oh, well, he's on the edge of 70. He wants to run. He'll be the oldest president since Reagan. You know, and Reagan's second term was, was demented, in all, in all likelihood. Uh, there are tales from people within his inner circle. And yeah, he was, in the last couple of years, maybe he wasn't as fast, as, as sprightly as he used to be. You can even see this in the debate, in, you know, when he's running for re-election against Mondale. It's a little bit different from when he was debating Jimmy Carter. Uh, even like the second and third debates, it wasn't just like he had an off day like, you know, uh, Obama when he had jet lag because the first debate was in uh, Colorado, I think in, in Denver. And so he's like, oh, I got this altitude sickness. It's like fucking snort a line, you know, to deal with it or something. chew some cocoa leaves. I'm sure you can get those because you're good friends with the Sinaloa cartel. Uh, no, uh, Biden may run. But the first problem is really his age. The second problem is that because of the schismatic tendency within the Democratic Party, the, you don't have any solution right now, as of right now, between the further left and the neoliberals. Now, Biden's a neoliberal, so the core of the party would coalesce around him if he were nominated. I don't think having an old white male, uh, semi-dynastic, because he was also a vice president, I don't think that would be very good for trying to get the, the younger voters on board. Maybe something that would have energized a millennial, you know, people who are now, you know, some of us are, you know, we're in our 30s, late 20s to mid 30s. Uh, do you think that Generation Z, which the Democrats really need <laughs> help with because they appear to be far less left wing than the millennials were at the same age, it's, it's like a, a generation lost on the Democrats potentially. Now I think Generation Alpha is just being born in the last few years, too. There's a whole nother one coming. Jesus Christ. It never stops. Uh, do you honestly think that these younger voters are going to be swayed by, by old, basically, Joe Biden? I would hazard a guess that the answer is probably no. Joe Biden, 10 years ago, more charismatic and teamed up with Obama, who was, you know, I think 20 years younger and happened to be of a certain, you know, racial characteristic. Yeah, that excited the young millennial voters. We're no longer the youngest voting bloc, though. Now, now we're equivalent to what Gen X was maybe now in, in the Bush era. You know, we're getting, you know, more towards middle age. Okay, well then... The millennials, which started off very blue, are beginning to migrate more towards you know, conservatism over time as generations tend to. But you've got another generation that's like 10 points more conservative than we were at the same time uh, that you're already having problems with. You have a charismatic, strongman candidate named Trump you're going up against who basically also exemplifies Gen X values for the most part, uh, despite being, uh, I believe, a boomer, an older boomer at that. Uh, but you're going to have problems if you run somebody like Joe Biden. It has to be someone younger than him. That would be number one. Probably someone who's, who's not both white and male, number two, simply because the so social justice warriors won't like it uh, if you have a white male candidate. They're not going to vote for him. So they're like, oh, you know, Democrats are just as racist as the Republicans. Look at this old white dude. You know, they'll say that sort of thing. Now, it also makes a convenient talking point for, like, the Green Party that'll probably run, you know, a trans-vegan candidate or something. You know, it'll be like, Jill, Jill Stein's boring, you know, she's, you know, we're running an 18-year-old candidate this time. Yeah, they can't take office, but you can vote for him anyway as a protest vote. You're going to see probably a stronger third party showing uh, than traditionally in the past. And Joe Biden has other problems, too. He has an image problem. Literally, with the, with the tech literate crowd, he has an image problem with regards to his interactions with women. And especially when framed in the Me Too debate, can you imagine that blowing up in the Democrats' faces at all? When people, you know, restart that hashtag a year from now with uh, pictures of Joe Biden creepily hugging women from behind and kissing senators' wives and all the rubbing people's shoulders? 
You know, when Bush did that to the German prime minister, uh, it was a problem. It was bad optics at the time. People were like, come on, you know, Bush, he's not taking things seriously. He's shitty on diplomacy. He's dumb. Joe Biden's 10 times worse. Don't you think that could become a campaign issue? I do. I happen to think so. Uh, Joe Biden has a problem with being a gaff master. He was known for this. He was ba he's basically the court jester of the Obama admin. He wasn't chosen as the VP uh, for his intellectual chops. He was chosen to basically give contrast to Obama. Here's old Joe, therefore young Obama. Here's yeah, not necessarily verbally always coherent Joe. Here's Obama. He can give him an MLK style speech, you know, compared to Bush arguably very good speaker. Uh, not not on objective terms, but compared to who came before, <laughs> there was no comparison. Yeah, that's why Joe Biden was chosen. So I would give 50-50 odds he runs, uh, but I'd give maybe 10% odds he becomes the nominee. And if he does, you have President Trump 2.0. You will. He, Trump would absolutely stomp him. You wouldn't even need to guess at that point. Yeah, it, it wouldn't be a problem for Trump to uh, completely run circles around him. Verbally, uh, I think he would have the edge there as well. Despite having a few, I mean, uh, literally, you know, uh, Trump will be in his mid-70s when he's running for re-election. I think Joe would be uh, a couple years older than that. It would look kind of funny. It definitely would. The Democrats' best bet is still to go with somebody who's, you know, 20 years younger but has enough political experience and can capture the youth vote without alienating the union sort of Rust Belt Democrats. That's their only real shot at beating Trump at this point because he's going to run on the economy and he's going to run a train through the asshole of the Democratic Party when he does. They're not going to beat him on taxes. Look, their, their platform calls for raising taxes. That's not a great idea when the economy is growing the way it is right now. Trump is going to say, what the fuck are you talking about? Look, we've got so many months of uninterrupted we've got job growth, wages are gone up. Uh, you know, everything's going fine. I'm the money president. You're sitting here wanting to abolish all that and raise people's taxes, make them pay more. That argument's going to fall flat. What then do the Democrats fall back on? Are they going to campaign on wanting to start a war somewhere? Are they going to become explicitly the war party? They could. It's a possibility. <laughs> Literally, uh, Trump has so many advantages. It's like, uh, again, read 13 keys to the White House by Lichtman. Trump has six keys already. With the clinching of a, of a DPRK deal or even good optics around that, he probably gets the seventh already. And there's not a really that high a chance that there will be a serious third party or independent competitor to throw chaos into the race like there was in 2016, which played in Trump's favor, by the way, at the time. But I don't think you're going to have quite that replication. If you do, it'll be because a bunch of Democrats get alienated because the Democrats will probably do one of two things. They'll get a Kamala Harris style candidate, go 100% full wedge issue platform, Trump is the Antichrist. They will alienate millions of Rust Belt voters that they had last time around. They will continue, they will definitely lose again in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. They probably lose Minnesota at that point. They end up collapsing to minor party status and reforming before rising back up in a new form. That's one possibility. The other possibility is they go neoliberal. They get a Joe Biden. They're not going to capture the social justice warriors. Yeah, you won't see a surge in California next time around if they run somebody like Joe Biden. You could go the Gillibrand route, try to play a missing link between the two. You can try, try to have your balancing act candidate. The problem is that you run the risk then of alienating both segments of the party. I'm not really seeing a way without collapsing the party and ending up with a total overhaul of their major platforms. I'm not really seeing how the Democrats remain relevant in 2020. I'm not, I'm, I mean, their candidate's probably going to be less interesting than Trump. Trump will once again run roughshod over them. He won't take corporate money. He won't waste time at fundraisers. He'll simply take grassroots donations and fly around and make speeches to large, adoring crowds of people, whipping them up into a frenzy to drive a wedge between Democrats and Republicans on enthusiasm. The Democrats are really great at turning out the vote in blue states, but that's because Hillary Clinton didn't want to go to areas that, uh, you know, that she wasn't already at least marginally popular. She didn't want to go to swing states. She wanted to go to heavy blue areas. Make it look like she was more popular, more exciting than she was. Joe Biden would be less uh, excitement worthy than Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton's a better speaker than Joe Biden. <laughs> it'd, be a, it'd be a wash. So I hope that he runs. It'd be funny to see him in the primaries, but the, the, the odds are remote he becomes the actual candidate. He'd be more likely to be chosen as VP again. 
than he would be to be chosen as the actual candidate of choice. The problem for the Democrats is Joe Biden can make a pretty damn good uh, pitch for it because the Obama backers are at this point just as powerful as the Clintonian neoliberals. From within that core, he could probably, uh, you know, gerrymander himself into the position. He could probably get it. I mean, he was in a, a distant fourth, I believe, when he ran. He was actually running for the position uh, when Obama and Clinton and the others were. I think Gephardt was running and a few of these others, I think. John Edwards, no, I think that he had already been disgraced. I think that was 2004. Uh, but you got to remember, Joe Biden's been in the White House. He's going to say, hey, I was already VP. I've got on-the-job training. Why don't you run me? And I've got Obama's backing, obviously, number one. I can have mass, massive fundraising, number two. I'm probably a little more palatable to the far left than a Clinton. Why not, why not go with Joe, he'll say. That'll be his slogan. He might actually be able to successfully make the argument and then get stomped into oblivion by Donald Trump, which would be funny. Uh, that's about all. Peace out.